Hey everybody, it's Will, coming at you with Community Compassion and New Earth Ecology and Regeneration. And uh, what we're doing today is an introduction to vermiculture. Um, so I ordered some worms a couple days ago in the mail um, from a local company, Uncle Jim's Worm Farm. Um, they ship out on Monday to avoid uh, waiting over the weekends. And it is Wednesday, so they have been in this box for three days. So if I was in the box for three days, I'd want to be out. So we're going to go ahead and get them a nice, suitable environment. So uh, what we have is a nice tote. You don't need anything too big. We're using this one here. Um, because uh, these worms that we ordered are red wiggler worms. They live on the first couple inches of topsoil. Um, so what vermiculture is versus uh, vermicomposting is we're going to be using these worms for other things besides composting, and specifically we're going to be using these worms for breeding. Um, as you can hear, we have our uh, furnace going, and uh, we are in our basement, so because this next to this, it stays pretty warm, and uh, we don't have to worry about it being too warm. These worms can last over the winter, even outside. Um, they're worms. They live in the, in the soil outside. So uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to put some holes in our bin so that we have aeration through our bin. You're going to want to make sure the holes aren't too big so that the worms uh, can't crawl out through your holes. Alright guys, so we've got holes in our bin. Just make sure you get off all the plastic. Don't want any plastic in your bin. Alright, the next thing that you're going to want to do is get a bedding in there. So what we're using is cocoa coir. This is a ground up coconut husk. I like to use this. Some people will say use peat moss, but I don't like to use peat moss because it is a semi renewable resource but not really because we're getting these out of peat moss bogs that took thousands of years to grow and they are beneficial to our environment so I'd rather not use peat moss for that sake and there's a booming coconut business at this time so there's plenty of coconut husk all over the world so I don't have a problem using this. So we're just going to put down a small layer of cocoa for it. Gonna need a little bit more than that. And if you're in a Harrisburg area, you can go to Lemoyne to Harrisburg Hydroponics, and they have always a really good deal on their cocoa coir that they have there. Alright, and our next step is to just moisten it up. You don't want it too wet. You don't want it so wet that when you squeeze it, water comes out. Um, you just want it to be wet where it holds enough water. You squeeze it and maybe you get a couple drips. So we're adding spring water. You can add distilled water. Um, you can also add tap water, but if you're going to add tap water, I recommend you let it sit out. With the, with the lid off of it for 24 hours so that the chlorine breaks down because you don't want to put chlorine on your worms. So just mix it in. If you need to add more water, add some more water. And the fun thing about coca Clear is as much as fun as it is getting dirty, you never really get dirty. Um, it's like, it's neutral, there's nothing in it, there's no nutrients in it, so it just washes right off your hands or you could just brush it right off your hands and not have any of the dirty residue left on your, on your hands. Alright, so it's nice and moist. Next thing we're going to do is add our worms. I just got this today. Very, very excited. It comes with some instructions. 
instructions. A little bit of newspaper, I'm just gonna throw it in there on top of there. And our worms. Our worms are in this package. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add these worms. Make sure you have a light on above where you're doing this, unless you're doing this out in the open sun, but right now it's winter, so we're not gonna be outside. But what the light does is it makes the worms wanna go down. So you're gonna to wanna to put these in here, and the worms will go into their new environment. Awesome, we're gonna go ahead and add our worms. I have my flash on with the camera, uh, trying to induce them to start to go down and sprawl into this media. So, it's very exciting. We ordered 2,000 worms. If you have more than 2,000, I would recommend a little bit bigger of a bin than this. But, uh, this will be perfect for the worms that we have right now. Also, since we're doing vermiculture, we want our worms to start producing eggs so that we can multiply these out and get some more bins going. So I'm going to add this egg crystal, this stone, with the intention of fertility. So we're just going to put this in there for them and it'll be part of their environment. So this is fun to watch. See all of our worms. Red wigglers. Let's see if we can find a cocoon in there. A worm cocoon is an egg. Um, they can hold anywhere from up to 20 uh, worms per egg, but usually they release about uh, six or seven per egg. A lot of these worms look immature. Uh, worms won't release eggs until they have that little band-aid looking thing around them. And uh, worms have both sex organs, female and male, so once they mate with each other, both of them lay eggs. These worms are very active for being in there for three days. They're ready to get into some stuff. I found the worm mass in the middle. It's just a mass of worms. Just, just a single body of, of worm. <laughs> Alright guys, so we've successfully inoculated our bed with worms. And the next step is to add food for them. So the first thing you're going to do is because they're new and because they've been in that box for three days, you're going to add something that's more bioavailable, something very fine and thin that they can get into very uh, easily. So I'm going to add a little bit of brown rice flour. Um, this is something that will be more available for them to eat immediately. So I'll add a little bit of brown rice flour. And then what we're going to be doing, because we are going to be also composting with this as we move along, we're going to be adding most of the foods on one side so we get compost on one side that we can harvest. Um, and so the technique with this is you add food on one side, they eat all the food on one side once you notice that it's all composted. You start adding food on the other side and the worms will move to where the food is and then you can harvest the compost out of there and there'll be only a few scraggler ones left in there. So what we're adding, we have a bunch of dead leaf material. I'm just going to add and we also have some food scraps, some lettuce, some asparagus, so I'm just going to rip this up and get that in there. Also some other leaf, it's other leaf material, so I'm just going to add all this. And we have a little bit of crushed eggshell, which we're going to spread throughout the whole thing. I'm just going to make sure I break the cell walls, make this a little bit more bioavailable for them. On this asparagus here. Alright, and then we're just going to add our eggshells across. They can consume most organic materials. You don't want to add stuff like meat or bones. Um, but for the most part, they can consume any. But yeah, encourage them to go to one side. Put most of the foods on one side. Oh, we also have a little bit.
bit of spec corn. Uh, we like to grow our mushrooms on corn. Uh, it's fun, easy substitute for rye grains because there's not a lot of stores that sell rye grains around where I live. So we're just adding some spec corn. Uh, worms really, really love to eat spec mycelium. So if you're growing mushrooms, um, once the mushrooms stop producing off the mycelial body, you can just break it up and then feed it to your worms. They love it and they'll turn it into very, very awesome soil. So, um, what we're going to do now is we're just going to add a thin layer of cocoa on top of them. And then we're going to cover them with paper. I'm alright. I mean, about tonight and everything. Now we're just going to cover it with paper. You can use shredded paper if you like. I'm just using this as a semi moisture retaining barrier, but they will eat this paper. Water. You don't want to suffocate them with water. You gotta make sure there's still oxygen in there. They will aerate it a little bit. I just make sure everything's moist. Alright guys, thanks for watching!